Hi guys, I'm a little peeved right now because of what I just read. Um, guys, this is not financial advice, but this is facts and something that can be found by anybody on the internet. So I'm not making crap up. I'm going to show you exactly what I found. Um, actually, I didn't find it. Aaron um, at Aaron 529 underscore 529 on Twitter did. Um, and guys, it is pretty disgusting. I mean, I knew that Susquehanna had a ton of fines, but I never really took the time to do the research to see exactly what they were for. And the same thing over and over and over again makes me never want to touch another option on um, something that they're the primary market for maker for for the rest of my life because it is appalling. And I am sure that this goes on in many, many, many retail um, stocks over and over again. And please note that they don't disclose on the violations the stock that they're being fined for or stocks. And my thought process on that is because if they did, they'd probably have a lot of lawsuits on their hand. But um, it's quite interesting to say the least and quite disgusting that the SEC and FINRA do absolutely nothing but give them a little slap on the wrist as a result. Anyways, guys, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and check this out because I think you'll be just as disgusted as I am. Hi guys, for those of you that were on the space call tonight, you know that Aaron found something about Susquehanna and he was researching their background where he realized that they had 41 regulatory events. So things that they have to disclose in the market, guys. And right now he tweeted it. I have it on my Twitter so you can take a look at it. But what I want to show you is these events and what they actually cause to the firm, the disclosures. So if you pull up the report where it says detailed report and just click on it, like I just did, it brings you to the um, firm's pages. And it says that the disclosures start on page 25, but it's actually like page 28. So guys, I'm just going to scroll down and then show you real quick how they continue to just repeat themselves and how they don't. It actually starts on page 26, but 27 is where you see the first violation. So um, as you can see, these are events that they have to disclose because they did something wrong and we're fine for it, guys. So let's quickly look um, because all of these are pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to read the first allegation because they're very similar or exactly the same and explain to you what this means. Without admitting or denying the findings, the firm consented to the sanctions and to the entry of findings that during the period of January 1st, 2019 to July July 31st, 2020, it violated New York Stock Exchange, American Rules 929NY and 320. The findings stated that the New York Stock Exchange, American Rule 929NY, H6B and C prohibited trades between two joint accounts having common participants and traders in which the buyer and seller are representing the same joint account and are on opposite sides of the transaction. So guys, basically the buyer and seller, so Susquehanna is pinging these trades back and forth with each other, which is exactly what they're doing in BBIG. And we have been talking about this past week. Um, the prohibited trades can result in no change in beneficial ownership. Why can there be no change guys? Because it's Susquehanna selling it to Susquehanna. They're not changing who it's being bought and sold to and potentially creates the false appearance of trading activity. To the extent such trades occur, firms are expected to reasonably detect them and submit requests to the exchange that the trades be nullified. During the relevant period, the firm affected a total of 2,408 trades 
for most of which the firm did not submit nullification requests, totaling 18,022 contracts, which violated New York Stock Exchange American Rule 929 NYH6B or C. The findings also stated that the tool used by the firm to identify joint account transactions applied rounding to the millisecond portion of an execution timestamp. The lack of precise execution timestamps caused the tool to fail to identify certain violative trades. During the relevant period, the firm did not perform a review that would have identified the rounding involved with the execution timestamp. The firm addresses this data issue in April 2020. In addition, even after the tool used by the firm to detect potentially violative vol- violative, sorry, trades was enhanced to use the correct time data. The firm's employees refrained from requesting that the exchange nullify certain trades. End of the trading day to be considerate to exchange staff. Yeah, I'm sure that's why they did it. During the relevant period, the firm did not conduct a supervisory review to ensure that the Violative trades it detected were nullified. Accordingly, the firm violated New York Stock Exchange American Rule 320E. Guys, now here's what goes on. There's 40 or 41 of these disclosures, right? Um, It says 40 here, but the top said 41. So I'm not quite sure what the um, difference is. But I want you to look at what the fines are. The firm was censored and fined $10,000. That's it, guys. $10,000. So they don't admit or deny to this because, of course, you know, huh, you know, allegedly they did it. Um, but then paying the fine basically speaks for itself. Are you going to pay a speeding ticket if you weren't speeding? Hell, speaking of that, if you were speeding 40 times, do you think you'd still have a license? How is it that there's still a brokerage and there's still... Now, guys, these same things go on and on. Let's just read the fines. $10,000, $10,000, $5,000, another $5,000, six, $6,000, $6,000, $6,000, $6,000, $6,000, $6,000, $6,000, $6,000. Guys, again, my whole point of reading these, is that it's a freaking joke. Honestly, $6,000, do you know how many millions, billions of dollars they've made with this scam that they're doing? This is absolute BS. And the fact that the SEC does nothing but find them $6,000, guys, it gets even worse. There's fines. Here's a $60,000 one. This is the most I was able to find, $60,000. Absolutely ridiculous. When they're making billions of dollars, guys, and they're screwing retail traders out of their option contracts that they're preventing from becoming in the money. This is a scam. Seriously, it has to make you think about why you're trading options. This is absolutely BS. This is gets even worse. Only $3,125, guys. $3,125 again. $3,125 again. Seriously, $3,125. $3,125. This is a joke. My whole point is, this is like, like literally saying, oh, like you getting a speeding ticket for a penny. Really? Why would you stop doing it? There's no there's no punishment to their crime. They're making billions of dollars, guys. And this goes on and on and on and on. And it's the same option trading things. You can pull it up and read it for yourself. I'm not going to keep reading every single one. But anyways, here's one for $50,000. The highest fine I was found, maybe I saw one for 100000 But guys, it was absolutely ridiculous. And I'm not really sure, but I would say that they're definitely making more money doing this than um, they're, they're losing with these ridiculous fines. So again, there is no regulation by FINRA or the SEC. They get a little slap on the wrist 
in a tiny, tiny fine that is a joke. And guess what? Guys, none of these fines go back to the retail investor that lost on all these trades, do they? Do we see the problem here? Next time you go to buy an options contract, especially one for BBIG, I really want you to think about that. Because until things change and they decide they want this to run the other way, you may not want to be buying calls, guys. I mean, it's your money. This is not financial advice. It's up to you what you do. But clearly there's a problem. And with Susquehanna being the primary market maker and having a huge stake in the company, can you not see where the problem lies? Guys, I don't know how else to say this, but this needs to be considered fraud and a fine. And someone needs to go to jail for this. This is absolutely insane that they can do the same thing 40 or 41 freaking times and have no punishment. I am beyond disgusted right now. And thank you, Aaron, for bringing this to all of our attention. This is unacceptable and Retail needs to start doing something, guys. I'm not kidding. If you guys haven't watched the Wall Street Custodians video um, that he did on BBIG and about the NAS and the the paper that he wrote up that he's filed the complaint, you know, with the SEC. And guys, you guys need to all be contacting the SEC, contacting your senators and filing complaints. Because if we don't all stand up for this, it's going to continue and nothing will change. And that I promise you, the rich will continue to rob us and get richer. And guess what? Are you going to sit there and just let them take your money? Or are you going to stand up and are you going to fight for your rights? And I don't mean fight guys physically. I mean, fight by contacting the SEC, contacting your senators, contacting FINRA, whoever you can get to listen to you and understand what is happening in this market, stand up, use your voices, use your ability to write. Even if you copy the same letter that the NIS wrote, change a couple words in it, guys. It's not that hard to do. Time for us to take action as apes. Let me know in the comment what your thoughts are. I hope you all have a wonderful night.